गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ बायोलॉजी दैट इज द फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ द सेल सेल इज द स्ट्रक्चरल एंड फंडामेंटल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ जस्टिफाई इट इज कॉल्ड स्ट्रक्चरल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ बिकॉज ऑल लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स देयर बॉडी इज मेड अप ऑफ सेल आई दे आर प्लांट्स एनिमल्स माइक्रोब्स दे आर बॉडी इज मेड अप ऑफ सेल सो स्ट्रक्चरली दे आर मेड अप ऑफ सेल सो सेल इज द स्ट्रक्चरल यूनिट ऑफ लाइफ If you see the hierarchy of the organism, so basically their body is made up of cells. Cells combine to form tissues. Tissue join together to form organ, and further the organs they combine to form organ system. And organ system comprises they combine together and they comprise organisms. So cell is the basic unit of life. Why it is called the functional unit of life? Because all cells perform certain similar basic functions that are uh, nutrition, respiration, excretions. All these basic functions are very crucial and important for the sustenance of life. So that's why the cell is called the structural and functional unit of life. Now the second important uh, point is related to discovery of the cell. Cell was discovered by Robert Hooke. He was an English scientist in 1665. He observed a very thin slice of cork. Cork is the bark of the tree and which tree it was? It was an oak tree. He took the bark or uh, the outer bark of the oak tree and outer bark is known as the cork and he made his microscope by his own that microscope was not so sophisticated and advanced but yes it was uh, able to magnify the cork so cork was observed under his self made primitive and crude kind of a microscope His observations about the cork was that he observed honeycomb like structure he coined the term cellula the latin word which means little rooms he published his findings in a book called micrographia which was published in 1665 in london his discovery was very important because his discovery gave the evidence that living organisms are made up of cells However, cork cells observed by him were actually dead cells. Why they were dead cells? Because he took the bark of the tree and bark is considered to be the dead cell. So as a whole we can give him the credit of discovering the dead cell for the first time. So who discovered the cell for the uh, first time? Robert Hooke. Who discovered the dead cell for the first time? That is also Robert Hooke. Now next chap uh, next topic is cytology or cell biology. The branch of biology that deals with the study of cell is known as cytology. So cyto means cell, logy means study. So study of cell is called cytology or cell biology. Okay now we know about the discovery of the dead cell but who discovered the first living cell that credit goes to Antony von Leeuwenhoek that was done in 1674 he observed first living cell in pond water he took the pond water and he observed it under his uh, microscope and uh, this credit of discovering the first living cell goes to AV Leeuwenhoek that was done in 1674 Then some one-liners are there that who discovered the nucleus? It was discovered by Robert Brown in eighteen thirty-one. Then who coined the term protoplasm? That was done by J. E. Purkinje, and in eighteen uh, thirty-nine it was done. So you must be wondering what is protoplasm? Although you have read it in eighth class, but just to clarify your doubt, protoplasm is equal to nucleus plus cytoplasm. Whatever is living inside the nuclear cell that is called protoplasm. Huxley called protoplasm as the physical basis of life because it is the living matter inside the cell. Haeckel said that nucleus is responsible for storing and transmitting the genetic information from their parents to the next generation so it was reported by the heckel that nucleus contains some genetic material dna rna genetic material and this one is responsible for storing as well as transmitting the genetic characters next very important topic is cell theory who gave the cell theory it was a joint effort basically it was given by j m skledin and t squan J M Schleiden in 1838 he was a german botanist and he first proposed that all plants are made up of 
cells because he was dealing with the botany so he just uh, said that plants are made up of cells then t schwann in 1839 he was a german geologist he proposed the idea that animals body is made up of cell and this joint finding forms the concept of cell theory as a whole so we can say that cell theory was given by skleden and schwann in 1838 and 1839 So what does uh, cell theory states it states that all living organisms are made up of cell cell is the site of metabolic reactions all the reactions all the uh, life activities happen inside the all the processes which are important for uh, living organism take place inside the cell cell is the structural and functional unit of life we have already justified all these terms okay now it one more postulate one more statement was added in 1855 by r virchow he was a german biologist and he made an additional statement to the cell theory he said that omnis cellula e cellula that means all cells arise from already existing pre existing cells and now one more question comes that what is the exception of cell theory what is the exception of cell theory exception of cell theory means the cell uh, theory doesn't uh, fits well in this that is virus virus lacks protoplasm and essential parts of the cells so basically it is a acellular thing it is non it is on the boundary line of living and non living it is living only when it is inside the host cell so we can say exception to cell theory is viruses viruses they don't uh, fit inside this theory now next topic is that you have to justify why the why it is said that omni cellular e cell all cells arise from pre existing cell why it is said uh, so so to justify this i have divided the answer into two part first if you see the living organism which are unicellular means whose body is made up of one cell like amoeba paramecium their body is made up of one cell and how they uh, de uh, divide and how they reproduce they reproduce by binary fission their body breaks into two and then they give new organisms new amoeba or new paramecium so in this way the new amoeba has arisen from already existing amoeba if we can say that all uh, omnicellula e cell cell arise from pre existing cell that was in the case of unicellular organism if we see the case of multicellular organism like animals here also you uh, in case of animals also all cells arise from pre existing cells so just see that like animals uh they also uh, uh, in case of multicellular organism like animals or human beings we can say that male gamete combines with female gamete they are unicellular and then they combine together to form the zygote zygote undergo many divisions and then multicellular organism is formed you can see the new cell is being uh, formed from the already existing cells in both the cases either in case of unicellular or multicellular so we can say that omnis cellula e cellula all cells arise from pre existing cell and this postulate was added by r virchow uh, and when he added this postulate r virchow when he added this postulate in 1855 then uh, as a whole now we can say that this is the modern cell theory first three are the part of cell theory after addition by uh, by r virchow it becomes the modern cell theory thank you